sent him home with that little boy. Here, son, take this home to mama. Now, that little boy could have kept his lunch and fed himself. He decided to give it away, and he fed himself. And 20,000 more people, and got his name in the Bible. Not his name, but his story. Now, I don't know what you're going to do with your life. You can do whatever you please with your life. I don't, I don't know what you're going to do. I'm leaving tomorrow morning. But listen, I would recommend you take your little life and say, Jesus, would you do something with this? Would you just do something? See, this is America, folks. You can work hard and make a lot of money and buy yourself a nice house, nice car, nice boat, have vacations. You really can live it up in this country. You really can. You can live your life for yourself if you want. That is your choice. Or you can live your life for the Lord, and then He will take care of what you need. It's amazing. I don't know what, what motivates you folks around here. I don't know. I, you just met me tonight. I just met you. Let me tell you what motivates me. 35 years ago, last week, I gave my heart to the Lord and got saved. I was a 16-year-old kid in high school, East Peoria, Illinois. I'd been saved for a couple of months. I was reading my Bible, going to church, growing, you know. And it was an independent, temperamental, fundamental, right-wing, radical, chicken-eating Baptist church I was going to. <laughs> they had, they had the, pul the preacher actually banged on the pulpit. I had never seen that before. I was raised in the Methodist church. We had two pulpits. One pulpit where they read the Bible from and another pulpit where he preached from. It took me a long time to figure out why. But it's because what he's reading over here is so far from what he's saying over here. <laughs> Had to separate them, you know. And I was growing in the Lord, reading my Bible, going to church, you know, and thinking, this is great, you know. And then one day a friend of mine said, hey, Kent, do you want to go with me to the Heart of Illinois Fair? I said, what's going on? He said, we got a booth set up for campus life, and we're witnessing to folks. I said, you're what? We're witnessing. We're telling them about how to get saved. I said, I've never told anybody how to get saved. I don't know how to do it. He said, well, come on. I'll just, show, I'll just give you one of the easy jobs. I said, okay. They had a couple of Volkswagen seats up there on the stage with wires in them. And people would sit down and they'd hit the button. And if you hit the button after the light turned green, you shock the other guy. But if you hit it too soon, you shock yourself. You know, bam, ooh. Ah. And they're having contests. Who can shock the other guy? You know, and they use that to draw a crowd in there. Pretty cool idea. Anyway. Our job was to go out into the crowd and get them to fill out a questionnaire, just 10 simple questions. The last question said, would you like to get to know God better? And if they said yes, we were supposed to bring them to the back of the tent and introduce them to one of the people in the back of the tent who would lead them to Jesus Christ, a soul winner. I was having fun, man. First two days, I'm out there bringing people back. Hey, you want to get to know God better? Sure, come with me. Bring them to the back, open up the tent flap. George, this is Herman. He wants to get to know God better. Oh, Herman, come on in, and I'd go back and get me another one. It was fun. Third night, Heart of Illinois Fair. Noise every place. Kids on the stage getting, you know, shocked and everything. I went out, a big old football player there from Richwoods High School. I said, hey, would you fill out a questionnaire for me? He said, sure. He wrote the, you know, answered the questions. Last one, I said, would you like to get to know God better? He said, yes, I would. I said, all right, come with me. I'd done it before. Nothing to it, you know. We walked back to the back of the tent, opened up the tent flap. There was nobody there. He said, what do we do now? I said, well, uh, I guess I'll show you. Keep in mind now, I'd never let anybody to the Lord in my life. This guy's twice my size. We went down, sat in the chairs, and, and the old metal chairs in the back of the tent in the heart of Illinois Fair. And I didn't know what to do, so I pulled a gospel track out of my pocket, God's Four Spiritual Laws. I said, let me read this to you. I sat there and read the whole thing. At the end, it says, would you like to receive Christ? He said, yes, I would. I thought, oh, brother, what do I do now? I got him on the hook, and I can't land him. <laughs> I said, well, it says pray this prayer. I said, let's close our eyes and bow our heads, and I'll pray first, and you repeat after me. He said, okay. I kept one eye open. I read the prayer off the track. I really did. <laughs> read the prayer. Lord, I'm a sinner. He said, Lord, I'm a sinner. I deserve to go to hell, you know, but I believe you died for me, and I want you to forgive me and save me right now. We got done. He looked at me and shook my hand. He said, Kent, thank you. I've been worried about this for two weeks. I said, you're welcome. And he walked out. 
Uh, noise every place. I mean, this is a carnival, you know. And here I'm standing in the, all by myself in the back of this tent. I thought, man, that was fun. Showing somebody how to go to heaven. I got down on my knees in the dirt next to that metal chair and I said, Lord, uh, it's me, it's Kent. I'm a brand new Christian and Lord, this is all confusing to me. I'll just tell you right now, I'm confused about a lot of things. I said, Lord, I don't know what you want me to do uh, with my life. I don't know. I said, but Lord, if it's okay with you, I, I think I'd like to do this the rest of my life. <laughs> I would just like to introduce people to you for the rest of my life. <laughs> well, it's been, uh, it's been 35 years. Nothing's changed. <laughs> I, I don't know what's important to you. Now, kids, you've got a thousand distractions in this world, I understand. I decided 35 years ago I'm going to give my dash to Jesus. See what, he, see what he can do with it. Some of you can give it to making money. You can give it to... You, you can give your dash to all sorts of things. I don't know what you're going to do with your life. That's a decision you've got to make. I'd recommend you do what I did, though. And it's never too late. You can be 85 years old and still give your dash to Jesus. And you say, Lord, I don't have much left, but you can have this. He can still feed 5,000 people with just a crumb. If all you got is a crumb left, he'll take it. If you're a Christian here tonight, what on earth are you doing for heaven's sake? There's a war going on. Can't you find something to do? <laughs> if you're not going to shoot, carry bullets. Take care of the wounded. Do something, okay? Everybody ought to start a ministry. The worst of you could serve as bad examples, if nothing else. <laughs> Find something to do with your life. Influence somebody for Jesus. Man, that's all I want to do. Well, we're over time tonight. We could talk all night about this, but if you want to use our materials, feel free. It's, they're not copyrighted. I told the Lord when I started this ministry 30, or 15 years ago, I said, Lord, there's a lot of things about your church I don't like. He said, son, I agree. I said, if you want me to go preach, I'm not going to copyright my stuff. I'm not going to charge anything for my seminars. And I'm not going to send out a letter every month begging for money. And if you don't supply, I'm going to quit. Okay? <laughs> he won't let me quit. Preached 830 times last year. We got all kinds of videos on lots of different languages. Spanish, French, German. You can get, get one of our catalogs out there. We have all kinds of dinosaur fossil stuff you can use for witnessing tools and get our college courses. If you want to go down deep, stay down long, come up dry. If we can help, that's what we're here for. Let's all stand, bow our heads, and let's, let's pray. Heavenly Father, would you please raise up some soul winners out of this bunch? Lord, right within, within 10 miles of where we're standing, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of people headed to hell Thousands of them. And Lord, we keep thinking the mission field's across the ocean someplace when it's right across the street. It's right next door. It's people we bump into at gas stations and toll booths and the grocery store and sit next to in school. And Lord, everybody here knows somebody that's going to hell. We're going to meet somebody tonight that's going to go to hell, Father, unless somebody shows them. Would you please... Get some of these Christians to quit worrying about who wins the dumb ball game and start worrying about who's going to heaven or hell. Send a revival, please, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it's an honor to be here in Jacksonville, Florida tonight. My name's Kent Hovind. I taught high school science for 15 years. And now for 15 years, I've been an evangelist doing seminars on creation, evolution, and dinosaurs. And I tell people up front what I believe. The Bible says very clearly that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. And I believe the Bible is literally true and scientifically accurate. 
And I think the evolution theory that's being taught in our schools is one of the dumbest and most dangerous ideas in the history of the world. So let's draw some clear lines like the name of the conference is, okay? That ought to be a clear line right there. This is not my wife. That's just a picture of her. Uh, we have three kids, and I got them all married off, and the dog died, so I made it. I'm home free. <laughs> and got two grandkids, one more due in a couple months, so we're excited about this grandpa stage. Grandkids are God's reward for not killing your own kids when you thought about it. <laughs> Amen. All right. The Bible says in Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, when was the beginning? We've got a split in Christianity today over this issue. When was the beginning? How old is the earth? And if you can't get past these first three words, how are you going to know when the rest of the Bible is literal or figurative? When was the beginning? Hebrews chapter 1 says, And thou, Lord, in the beginning...